What's up guys, Matt Tolbers. Today we're gonna do a review on my Mr. Heater Big Max. This thing is amazing, I love it. That's why I wanna do a review. People have been asking me, bro, what heater is that? So I'm gonna do a review on it. It's really cheap to run, guys. I run on natural gas, but has a conversion kit for propane. Keeps it hot and nice in here. So uh, I'm in Minnesota, it's 22 degrees out right now, and I could make it 90 degrees in here if I wanted to, which I will talk about in a second. But uh, yeah, they got three different sizes, so no matter how big your garage is, it should be big enough. Um, and if you need to, you have a really big garage, bro. All right, guys, here is the Mr. Heater Big Max. Uh, this is a 45,000 version, BTU version. Uh, they don't actually make the 45,000 anymore, but it's the same exact thing. They, may, they used to make a 45 and a 75, but they don't make those. Now they make 50, 80, and 125,000 BTU. So the 50,000, which is basically just a little bit bigger than this one, um, that is 1,250 square feet if you're uninsulated. If you're insulated, it, it warms up to 1,500 square feet. The 80,000 BTU one, which is the next version up, that one um, is 2,000 square feet uninsulated and 2,500 square feet insulated. So let me just kind of show you this a little bit from a few angles um, because you can see how I have it hanging here. And I did not mount it, I paid somebody to do this. Um, he's done a lot of these before, so maybe it's not super professional, but I think it looks good and it's worked amazing for the a little over two years I've had it. Here's the exhaust vent, it's like a four inch exhaust vent, or vent pipe. Um, I have it going horizontal. You can also do it vertical. Um, if you choose, this is the natural gas line, which is a half inch line, which uh, goes up. The 125,000 BTU even uses that. So you don't need a bigger one because you have the high BTU one. Um, and it does that come with a conversion kit to run propane if you choose. Um, and then you want to have, so basically you want to have a natural gas line and you want to have your electrical power outlet close by. I'm sure you can have somebody come and do this for you. Just run it through the... Uh, attic or whatever unless you know how to do that um, you just want to have a regular power outlet uh, doesn't use much power all it uses power is to run the fan which is just like a regular medium size fan I would say um, and then it uses it to spark the uh, gas and then get it warmed up and then the fan obviously blows it out so it's only uses it barely uses any power like you probably won't even notice your electrical bill at all Maybe, I don't know, five bucks or so, seven bucks. I don't know. Something very cheap um, will be, and the main thing would be that this would be what you'd be paying for is the gas to run this bad boy. And uh, like I said, the highest bill that I paid so far in the last two winters running this 24 seven in uh, Minnesota is with my house furnace, guys. Not just this, with my house has been in the 90s. I might show a picture of uh, my heating bill from last year. But uh, yeah, so it's really cheap. I barely even noticed it didn't even affect me as far as uh, bills, you know what I mean? To have this gym, my gym warm at all times. And guys, and that's with me keeping my thermostat at like, it's off, it's been off for a while. So I wanna be quiet in here when I first started mentioning this and I have that door open. But uh, normally I keep it at about 66 because I don't like it too hot in here when I'm working out. Sometimes it'll be at 68 or if it's really cold, sometimes I'll go up to 70 if I'm feeling cold. But uh, yeah, so this, my whole garage is fully insulated, right? But I shut this door normally and I have this wall also insulated. So only half of it, I usually keep warm. Um, this is about 340-ish square feet, my gym, right around that. Um, but when I wanna heat up this side, which I said, this is fully insulated. This side is fully insulated too. So if say if I wanna work on my cars or do something else out here, um, I'll open this door, turn the fan on, and this is kind of why I have this fan mounted here. Um, I can turn this fan, swivel it, whatever angle I want it, but I've mounted it right here just to kind of help blow some of the hot air out there to make it speed up the process of getting that warm instead of let, letting the air just kind of circle around here, slowly go out there. It does help heat it out there quicker. Um, and I can get that just as, I mean, as warm as I want. It might be a little hotter in here than it is out there just because I have this wall up and this will see it hotter in here than it will out there, but it'll make it so nice and toasty out there that uh, it's good. So that's what the setup guys I got going on. Now I wanted to say the competition for this thing uh, is this Modine hot dog, which you may have seen. Um, if you're doing research, uh, to me, what I've researched, it seems as if it's pretty similar guys, like the people are saying, like it's made in the same warehouse, like a lot of the same parts and stuff. I could be wrong guys, but from my research, that's basically what people are mainly saying. 
Um, the warranties seem to be the same, uh, like three year, everything is covered for three years, but then like the heat exchanger is like 10 years. The prices of the Modine hot dog is like way more for some reason. Um, they do have a 30,000 BTU, which is lower than any of this does, but it goes up to, the, basically the rest of them are all about the same as this. So if you have a really small garage, um, maybe the 30,000 BTU from the uh, Modine hot dog would be good but it's even more expensive than I think the 80,000 version of this. So I'm not sure guys, if you maybe you like that company better or something, but for me, this has worked perfect. Uh, it has really good reviews on Amazon and uh, a lot of reviews I've read have been really good. So I think this is amazing. Now guys, as far as you got the natural gas propane or you can run like electrical, um, my thing with electrical and what I've researched and <laughs> I've used things with electricity. I mean, I've used those little ones you plug into the wall um, those little room heaters and those things are expensive to run. I was trying to run that before I had this, which they didn't put out any heat and that thing was charging up the bill like crazy. So, um, from my experience and what I've researched, electric heaters are extremely expensive. The one positive of the electrical heaters, um, sometimes it can be a little bit cheaper, but, um, uh, is you don't have to have an exhaust, which is kind of cool. Like, oh, I don't got to make a hole in there. I don't got to deal with that. But you, you probably, unless you have a tiny one, you're probably gonna have to have the, the new electrical because this one's only like 120 volts, which is like your normal power outlet. We have to have like a 240 volt, which is like the big one where it's like a circle thing you stick in there. Um, other, and, and if you do even have the 120 ones like this, sometimes you'll, you'll flick the switch or whatever. You gotta go turn it on in your breaker box. That I, I've done that with room heaters a lot. So electrical heaters, I'm not saying they don't work good for some people, but if you live in a really cold climate like I do, I, from my research, these are a lot better to go and they're, they're a lot cheaper overall on electricity. If you were, live in a warmer place and you only need to use it a little bit, then maybe electric, electrical uh, heater is the way to go. Some people use radiant or like infrared heaters. I looked into those too. Um, it's more of like a, it doesn't like warm up the air. It just warms up like things like say it warm up like this like the floor quicker than like the hot air in the room would. But the thing with me is I just run this 24 seven. So everything's already warm all the time. And it's so cheap that why would I just need to quickly warm up that in my bars and the floor because I already use this 24 seven and it's so cheap that everything's already warm. So, uh, and you know, it's, if you don't got super tall ceilings, my ceilings are nine foot three inches. Um, so they're decent tight, but I mean, I don't know. I've been under some of those and it's like your head's hot and I don't know. Some people, those work good. And uh, some people are probably smarter with how to work those than I am. So maybe they can make it work well. But for me, this works so good and it's so cheap that I, I wouldn't go another way for my setup. For this review, I was like, I wonder how hot this thing can get. My thermostat went up to 90. So I was like, all right, let's do this. And I had my door shut, okay? So we're only talking 340 square feet. I turned it up to 90, it was 35 degrees outside. It got to 90 in here. And I don't know how long it took. I was, I was in my house for like an hour um, and I came back out and it was 90 degrees. It probably didn't take too long, but within an hour it went from, I think I had it in the 60-ish range. It was at 90 in here. And it was like a sauna. I was like, woo! So I don't know if I had this door open, if it would have actually got to 90 degrees, um, it would have tried and it would have gotten it very hot in here regardless. It would have at least been in the upper 70s, probably 80s for sure. Um, but I still think it maybe would have hit 90, even with that 35 degrees outside uh, with an insulated garage. So uh, yeah, just wanna say this thing, we'll get it hot guys, uh, which hotter than you need. This isn't something that just kind of keeps it semi comfortable, like 45 degrees, wear a hoodie, 50 degrees, like you can get hot. The one thing you will have to buy besides just this, um, and maybe if you get some wood or something, I'm not sure how exactly you plan to mount it. If you're just gonna mount it directly to uh, wood or the uh, studs, you, the mounting brackets that come with it, um, you're gonna need to buy an exhaust because it does not come with the exhaust vent. Um, they do have some, this company has some that you can, it, it's kind of expensive to be honest. And some reviews aren't the best. They like, there's some parts you don't need or it doesn't have some you need. Um, so. I, the guy I had, he just went to Menards and got like the, the pipes. Um, basically there's just like a pipe here and there's one outside. I'll show, hopefully show a video in the morning. It's dark outside, but it just like goes down. So it just blows. Obviously you don't want water to pour down in it. So it just goes down. That's all it is. It's like a simple straight pipe. So if you want to look at it, 
That's kind of what we got going on here. You need this. It has like where it blocks on both sides. It's like this on the other side also. And he put some caulking around it. So that just goes through the wall. He drilled a hole with one of those circle saw things. It just drills a perfect circle. He drilled through. Then it has the pipe that just goes down. That's basically all we got going on there. Put a link guys to the different, um, the different Big Maxes on Amazon and maybe try to show you the exhaust kits. But uh, you have options to just part, get the parts, separate parts, or you can just buy the kits which can be expensive. I want to show you guys it turn on uh, maybe see how the sound is uh, how loud it is you guys I don't know how well it's gonna pick it up and this is just a quick overview of the thermostat I have if you guys want one like this um, it's all just touchscreen you know if I if I press this mode it'll turn it to heat um, obviously you had AC or something you could do that too and then you just press there's a plus or a minus because if I do this right now it's gonna turn on um, another cool thing about this one specifically uh, I don't have the Wi-Fi on right now because uh, I haven't been using it but basically you can set up Wi-Fi. If you have Wi-Fi at your house, you can connect it to this. So on your phone, you can get the app and connect it to this. And when you do that, say if you don't wanna run this as much as I do, you just wanna use it, say you're like, oh, I'm gonna be home in an hour or uh, at a certain time. You can go on the app and as long as you have internet on your phone, you'll connect to this and you literally can turn this heater on and set it to a temperature before you're home at a certain time. You're like, oh, I'm gonna turn it up. So this will start up and be nice and warm in here <clears throat> before you get home instead of running it 24 seven. But the thing, like I said, is stuff might be kind of cold. It'll take a while to warm up the floor, warm up everything in there. So I figured I'd at least mention that, but let me just turn this on quick. I'm um, sorry, my voice is kind of going on. I need to drink water, um, really dehydrated. I'm gonna turn this on, try to let you guys listen. So uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna shut this door here too. Maybe that'll the sound might be a little different. Uh, let's turn it on here. So so I touch it, then if I hit mode, heat, um, and we got it set 72, let's turn it like 68. It's so right now it's just like getting the fan going or something. You'll hear it in a second. Or it'll spark. I don't know, it's like the pre-warm-up stage or something. It always does, it takes a couple seconds. The next thing the fan's gonna turn on. I'm trying to be quiet so you guys can hear this. The fan's not actually on yet. It's just like warming it up. There we go. Okay, now let me come over here. I don't know how, <clears throat> I don't know how it's picking up guys, but literally it's not loud at all. <clears throat> Sorry, I keep uh, my throat super scratchy right now. I need water, but. That was directly in the wind. But yeah, it's not loud at all, guys. I don't know how well you can hear me on here, but it's not, I mean, you could talk to people on the phone, whatever, and it shouldn't bother you guys at all. But yeah, I'll have the links in the description, guys. If you have any questions, just ask me. Um, and if you're a professional or something, you have tips, help the people out, or uh, give me tips or whatever. Um, but for me, from my experience, this thing's worked amazing, and I love this setup, how I can just keep it warm in here at all times for cheap. Like I said, I can turn it on if I want to. I can turn it on from, you know, 100 miles away and warm it up for my wife to come home or whatever I want to do with the Wi-Fi. It's awesome, guys. This thing works super good. Uh, like I said, those as long as you can get somebody, get the little circle thing, cut it out, get your exhaust in there, have somebody set up your uh, regular power outlet, just run it there, and your gas line. And uh, I think somebody can install this for pretty cheap. I can't remember how much I paid the guy, but it wasn't that much, guys. Um, it was really cheap. I was shocked how cheap it was. You just got to find a good guy to do it um, And you will have a nice warm garage. Like I said, it's like last I checked it's 22 degrees outside and this has been off and this door has been open for Honestly guys, it's probably been an hour. Um, and like I said, it only got to 61. This thing takes a while before it like it starts 
going up too, I've noticed that. So like I can already tell it's getting warmer, especially over here. But like I said, with these things, you don't wanna get too big of one because when you get too big of a one, it's using a ton of power guys because it's gotta get started up. It's like getting a huge engine started up compared to a, a littler one. That initial right there uses a lot of energy. And then also it gets so hot and blows so much heat so quick that it can draft over here and warm this up and shut this off quickly. And then see over here, it's kind of cold and stuff. Instead of it, it keep flowing and keep warming everything up. Um, and the thing is also, if you get the big one, it's not that efficient right off the bat because right when it starts going, it's like a car, when you have something coming on and off like that, it's like a car that's a city car, like constantly starting and stopping. It's cycling so quick because it's warming up real quick, kind of uncomfortable warmth because all of it might not be evenly warm and then it's shutting off. And then it's starting up again, you know, a few minutes later as air leaks out for your garage and it's like constantly starting and stopping. You got too big of a heater. Um, you want it more of a constant flow. Um, it's more like, a, you know, cruising on the freeway. You know, it, it's, it's a lot easier on the uh, engine or on gas, I should say. So, sorry if that's not a good explanation, guys. You can research on not wanting too big of a heater, but basically you're gonna end up spending a lot more money on uh, gas, and you're also gonna be going through the heater. It's gonna be rough on all the parts, starting and stopping so much. You want, to, you want it to run for a longer period of time. You don't want it to start and stop and heat up real quick. So make sure you don't get too big of a heater, guys, from research. Do more research on it. I'm not going to get too much into explaining. If you guys got any more questions, let me know. I'll try to answer them the best I can. I'm just giving you my honest experience, guys. I do a lot of research before I buy stuff um, so that I don't have to keep buying stuff or get pissed off because I bought something that sucks. I've had a bad experience with. So when I buy something, I make sure I do a lot of research and I've had a really good experience with it. Um, and if something went wrong with this, honestly, guys, I would literally, it's not that expensive in my opinion. And it's worked, even if it works a few years for me, I would literally just disconnect it and just plug it right, a new one back in. Um, if the warranty for some reason, I mean, like I said, I still have at least another warranty on everything, a year warranty and then 10 years on the heat exchanger. So, uh, and I would just buy a new one and just reconnect it right to the same spot if something went wrong. That's just my opinion. That's what I would do. Uh, just keep it working. That's all I need to do. Keep doing what it's doing. Uh, but yeah, guys, you got any questions, let me know. Uh, as you know, I do home gym equipment reviews. So if you guys want to see that type of stuff, then subscribe. If you guys, if this was helpful, just leave a like. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace. It's a little bonus for my bros. I just wanted to see the cars. This is a 2020 Veloster N. The reason I have the hood popped is because I have it connected to my uh, little battery tender to make sure it's, it's in the green. It's got a good, keeps the charge of the battery well. Uh, I still have my summer tires and it started snowing super early in October here. So I can't drive this thing right now. I got to get some uh, new wheels and uh, some winter tires on it. So that's why that's sitting there. And then this is my uh, 2019 Kia Stinger GTS. I have it, you know, done some stuff to it. Obviously a lot quicker, um, wheels and t tint and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's super dirty. As you can see all the crap from all the snow on it and stuff it needs to be washed. But yeah, so figure I'd show you guys my cars quick because I'm a car guy.